I was struggling for like one entire week just to think of an introduction to this video. But then I watched the Nemesis stream and I came across a clip that I'll just let it do the talking and you understand what I mean. Jarvan tried to have a cooldown challenge impossible. I'm making this video to tell you that, indeed, Jarvan does not have a cooldown, but it's not just a Jarvan problem. Just a warning for you, this video has lots of numbers in it, but I'll try to keep it simple. Before we get into the math class though, I'll let you know about this video's sponsor, Porofessor. If you're not familiar with it, Porofessor is an application that will help you with your league games before, during and after each match by showing you what champions are popular or have high win rates, giving you a notion of how your teammates and opponents tend to play, and giving you room suggestions to your champion taken from Master Plus games. During the game, it will show you statistics of the match, such as team gold, and your kill participation, CS per minute, and more. It also gives you a convenient way to mark enemy summon spell timers without having to calculate the time based on chat timestamps. But my favorite part comes after the game, where you get a detailed rundown of how you performed, and gives you pointers on what you did well on, and what you need to improve and pay attention to when you go through the replay. Porofessor is entirely free to download and I'll link it in the video's description and in the pinned comment. Thanks to Porofessor for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching the ad. Last week or so, Ability Haste was all the rage. The new hot topic on the League community on Twitter and Reddit brought to light by our dear friends Javan and Zed, using their dashes more frequently than a full build level 16 Kassadin. As always, I'm a little late on the news, but not too late to discuss why this haste creep might be a problem that Riot can't or won't solve. So let's start with a quick little history lesson. Until 2019, Ability Haste wasn't a thing. Instead, we had cooldown reduction. When you bought an item, you wouldn't get 15 ability haste, it would be like 10% cooldown reduction, which would reduce your cooldowns by, well, 10%. Simple enough, right? But in order to prevent you from stacking all this into having so much CDR that you could spam a Shen ult every 20 seconds, the stat was hard capped at 40%. You could still buy items with CDR after reaching it, it would just waste some of your gold. After 2019, we got an update that changed it to ability haste, which is now supposed to be an intuitive alternative without the hard cap. Okay, history class is over, time for a math class. The biggest new thing that haste introduces, the reason why it works, is in the way it's calculated. At first, you look at the numbers and you ask yourself, okay, but how many seconds will this amount actually shave off? It's actually a pretty simple formula. Your current cooldown is equal to the base cooldown times 100 divided by 100 plus your ability haste. This means that if you have an ability on a 15 second cooldown and 30 haste, your real cooldown will be 1500 divided by 130, so 11.5 seconds give or take. This formula makes it so that there is no real cap to how much haste you can get, but there are diminishing returns, with a soft cap at around 50% reduction or 100 haste. Note that you can still go higher, but at a diminished gold efficiency. This is because when you go above 100, you'll be dividing that 1500 by 200, which compared to dividing it by 130, it's a huge increase. With 30 haste, we shave off 3.5 seconds off of our original cooldown. With 100 haste, that 70 extra haste you just bought will slice off an extra 4 seconds. So in total, 7.5 half of the original cooldown. But if you get 170 total haste, you just got another 70. But this new 70 is worth less than the previous one. That's because it will only shave 2 seconds by dividing that 1500 by 270. In short, the more haste you get, the less value each point of haste will buy. It's an elegant way to introduce a soft cap if you ask me. It's just simple maths, baby. You might have noticed though, that at 170 haste, you're bringing the original cooldown to 5.5 seconds from the original 15. That is equivalent to having around a 64% cooldown reduction, well over our original hard cap of 40%. So how does this all relate to Javan and Zed? Why isn't like um, Victor abusing this? The key is in the other stats that their item builds offer. If we take a look at AP items, most of them will have around 15 haste, if they give any at all. The main damage items on AP are Shadow Flame, Death Cap and Void Staff, which give no haste at all. The items that do have it are 
are either defensive items like Banshees or Zonias, or niche items like Nash's Tooth, Horizon Focus, or Cosmic Drive. Cosmic is the true haste item for AP, at a whopping 30 haste. If you stack that with the 20 you get from Leandris, plus its mythic passive bringing it to 40 at full build, and Ionian Boots, you're getting a total of 90 haste if you don't build any other haste items. But think about it, what are you sacrificing to get to that number? First of all, penetration is a big thing. The only penetration items that give haste are Mythics, Ludens and Rocket Belt. And penetration is quite important on mages. You're also sacrificing Sorcerer's Shoes, which are built basically on every mage, letting go of one of the most efficient items at 18 flat penetration to get that juicy 20 haste from Ionians. Cosmic Drive is also a big sacrifice with a huge opportunity cost. It's 30 haste for sure, but the movement speed passive is quite niche and it gives 100 AP which is on par with other damage items, but with no damage passive or penetration to go with it. Compare that to AD champions like Zed and Jarvan. I'll use Zed as an example because I'm more familiar with him. Ravenous Hydra is the cornerstone of his current build, giving 20 haste, already more than most AP items. Then, Ionian Boots aren't as much of an opportunity cost for him. There's no Lethality Boots after all. His second item will either be a Duskblade, with 20 to 40 haste as you get more items, or a Black Cleaver, 30 haste from the get-go. Whatever the case, he's gonna build both of those eventually. After that comes Serodas, offering 20 more haste. And to finish it off, he might go for an Edge of Night or more of Mormortius, which don't really give haste. Even then, if we sum it up, that's 130 haste, 140 if he takes Transcendence, which he most likely will. That is not counting Hextech Drakes or Blue Buff, which also give him a little extra. The main point of contention is, what does he sacrifice to get to this point? Hydra already gives him a ton of AD, gives him a little sustain to mitigate one of his weaknesses, and gives him really good wave clear. Then, Black Cleaver gives him all that haste, but also a good amount of AD and Armor Shred, which he can apply rather easily. And yeah, it does give 500 HP, the same as heavy bruiser and tank items like Hullbreaker or Sunfire Aegis on a super mobile assassin. Then, Duskblade is not only his best haste mythic, but also his best damage mythic most of the time. Ghostblade on paper seems like it gives a lot, but Duskblade's bonus ability damage cannot be overstated. Eclipse would be a competitor, but it does sacrifice lethality and AD to be a little more effective against tanks, so Duskblade becomes his more versatile option. Then, Serildas gives 20 more haste while also giving respectable AD and 30% penetration straight up, which stacks with Black Cleaver's armor shred by the way. And if you really think about it, the equivalent of AP items to Serildas are Void Stuff, Rylice, and it also gives 20 haste on top of all that. So it does the function of basically three items all in one slot. So now we have a Zed running around with 140 ability haste, but he's also tanky because of Cleaver, has a slot to build another bruiser item like Maw to be even harder to kill, deals plenty of damage to the point where he's throwing out mini nukes every 2.5 seconds, and there's the fact that he maxes W second, which means getting level 13 lets him blink around a fight like a crack cocaine maniac while refunding his energy by hitting shurikens. And let's consider the fact that Spear of Shojin is actually a viable item on Zed, giving him haste numbers that should not be legal and more AD than most lethality items do. Jarvan is in a similar boat, in that going God Drinker and Spear of Shojin on him, even after the nerfs, is still his optimal path for durability and damage, while giving him earth levels of haste. Now, is all of this an actual problem? Two days ago, as of writing this script, Riot Froxon made a long tweet detailing the reasoning of why haste is so prevalent in the game right now. In it, he specifies that assassins are supposed to move away from just raw burst and one-shotting into being more like slippery mosquitoes. In his own words, making them more about repeatability of their rotations rather than one-shotting. He essentially sets a dilemma between either damage creep or haste creep, the latter being the chosen option at the moment. With the upcoming Mythic item purge in Season 14, some of that haste will be eliminated because Dustblade and Goddrinker will no longer give you 5 haste per legendary item you build. The idea behind this seems to be that casting abilities is part of what makes champions fun. And he's right. Having tons of haste feels really good when playing Zed, Renekton, Jarvan, Kiana or what have you. But what must be considered is the downsides of building that much haste. As we've established, AD champions have many items that they build, like Death Dance, Hydra or Serildas, that just happen to give a significant amount of haste, despite being built for other purposes. There's just too many items in the game that give haste as an additional bonus, 
while having powerful passives or other stats to go with it, and not enough opportunity costs for the items that do give lots of haste. For example, Black Cleaver has a lot more going for it than Cosmic Drive, despite both giving 30 haste. Another good point brought by Assassin players is that if assassins aren't supposed to bring in a lot of burst damage, who is? What's the point of having an assassin when you could just bring a bruiser and do the same thing, just trading mobility for better durability and possibly CC? I'm of the mindset that in a 1v1, a 2 item assassin should be able to kill a 2 item ADC or mage with a single rotation of abilities. That's their entire identity. Then, to make it balanced, their rotations should be on a longer cooldown to make up for the fact that they've just eliminated a player from the fight and are now waiting for their cooldowns to come back in the outskirts of the fight, rather than just staying in it, spamming abilities and still killing squishies in a single rotation regardless. But I think if I keep talking, I'll just ramble in circles. What do you think of this whole haste thing? Do you prefer that champions can use abilities more often with a little less damage? Would you prefer if everyone had longer cooldowns but increased damage? Or a third option, and just reduce both damage and haste in general, at risk of bringing back tank meta? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers!